listen. So we're going to be releasing several videos on our Sundance coverage, all leading up to the must-watch, which includes everything we saw there. But we figured, why not start with the most expensive sale out of Sundance, breaking the record with a whopping 69 cents. Let me explain. So Palm Springs is produced by The Lonely Island, who were able to score the record-breaking deal. And I believe the last one to hold the record was Birth of a Nation. And something tells me this will have less pushback at the box office. It stars Andy Samberg and Chris Emiliotti, who find themselves reliving a wedding in Palm Springs, which is the same place the director got married at. And it's a pretty cool time loop movie. Granted, when you're at a festival, a lot of the movies don't have trailers or stills. Hell, they don't even have posters sometimes. So it was a cool surprise going in not knowing anything about it. Obviously, the press notes and the eventual trailer are going to highlight the time looping but that's why we want to try to hook up some more tickets for next year we were able to do that this year but you know it's just cool to be able to be a part of the festival and being able to experience these movies without knowing anything no marketing you know Rotten Tomato scores zilch and I want you guys to have that opportunity as well uh, in terms of this one though the test of a good movie is if it can stand multiple viewings especially in the case of a movie that involves multiple viewings. I think these two do a fantastic job in the film. J.K. Simmons in a comedic role is always great because he's still scary, but the cast really is what makes it one to watch with an audience. One of the notes I was given on set was to bring less Joe Pesci energy, and it was... <laughs> I said more Pesci. I thought you said less Pesci. I said Pesci. more Pesci. Do I think it was worth the highest record at Sundance? Probably not, but it, it definitely feels more like a premiere in my eyes, considering the teams behind it, so I definitely think it's going to do well when it gets released publicly. It'll probably break my top five comedies, but certain elements, as we learned in the Q&A, uh, are just there because the filmmakers like the 90s blockbuster. And that's fine, but maybe those jokes will work better for other people that are not me. It does have the good old Groundhog Day theming of living life to the fullest, while at the same time, you know, naming Niall, Niall, because he's a nihilist. But I think people are going to love this one, even if you're not into the Lonely Island sense of humor. It's a genre that's been getting Super Bowl commercials that are technically sequels, so it's nice to know that such a repetitive concept is worth repeating if you find a good setting, a premise, and most importantly, actors you don't mind seeing over and over. So anything that can help something you put a lot of time and energy and love into get seen by people who like seeing things, I feel like is a great place for it. We're hoping Pornhub picks it up. <laughs> Yeah, we should say Pornhub is interested. Yeah. They took me for a burger on Fairfax and showed me a PDF about their plan to get someone to buy them a boat that we could ride around in for all summer. <laughs> Omniboat. So this is a series of shorts about a 47-foot speedboat named uh, Landpipe that gets chronicled throughout Miami, and as you heard, it's based off of a PDF file. It's pretty much an anthology of this boat with every short having the same production team and the director being swapped out for each one, and they practically had free reign to do whatever they wanted. And so we go from, like, Miami real estate during an impending flood to, uh, boat daddy vr the green rangers in it finn wolfhard for those who like strange things robert redford came out of retirement for the 15th time to voice a dolphin as his grandson directs the segment the daniels direct the segment who did i, I love the daniels they were the reason why i checked this movie out producer phil lord worked on it it's a lot of many things and i don't want to bound it to one genre but i think depending on how its comedy hits you is going to be the deciding factor at the q a they really honed in on how the movie's mosaic quality how it jumps all over the place really represents Miami and all its parts with how energetically it jumps around. They even brought up how Miami is rumored to be flooded by the 2050s, so they had this sense of urgency. But it's also Miami, so they're chilling. How the boat itself, like, I don't know if it has its own IMDb, but the boat was born in Miami, like, in real life, before moving to the Ozarks. Because, in case you didn't know, the salt water in the south decays these boats, so a lot of them have to be transferred over to, like, I don't know, Jason Bateman's place, where he's probably stashing the product. So what the filmmakers had to do was find Lane Pipe in Missouri, tow it back to Miami, and technically return it to its rightful home before trying to sell it at Sundance. So she's born in Miami. Yes. Moved to like some other place for a while. And well, yeah. who knows where her next home is. Yeah, <laughs> and she wound up back home. That's beautiful. And now she's gonna be yours. <laughs> now I really like the first half of the movie, but I don't know what happened in the latter half. I'd argue the Boat Daddy segments, while funny and heartfelt, is where it starts to sink a little bit. But once the Rick Ross sketch starts, for sure. I mean, what an ending to that one. But that's when I docked. 
They spent a year and a half figuring out how they were going to piece all of these artist shorts together. So I'm sure one of these days people will like get together and rearrange the segments and create different Fantasias like they already do for a bunch of other movies. Plus, there's supposedly like nine hours out there. There's a nine hour cut. So there's plenty of footage to play with. But the best part about anthologies is that you can prefer ones over others. And it's almost like watching a, a shorts film festival with a reoccurring theme. The worst part, you're still paying for the whole thing. And at two hours, it's kind of hard only recommending half of it. We did them in two rounds. Um, the first round, the boat just had to be in it. And they no, they didn't even follow that. <laughs> Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Uh, again, Palm Springs had the biggest record, so I think that one's going to do pretty well. I don't, it's always interesting to think, like, as culture, you know, shifts. Everyone says Groundhog Day when it comes to, like, the genre, and any time a movie was made, we would always refer to Groundhog Day, and we would sometimes bash it. Now it's like a genre in and of itself. There's a bunch of movies that do the Groundhog Day thing. Uh, I don't think, you know, in the future, kids are going to be calling it the Palm Springs. I think it's still going to be Groundhog Day, but I, I think Palm Springs is going to be that Groundhog Day movie for this new generation who may have not gone back and seen Groundhog Day or missed a commercial at the Super Bowl. Uh, in terms of Omniboat, again, I was in there for the Daniels. I really like the Daniels. They directed one of the segments. It's just, it's all over the place, but I'm curious to see what people like about it. Uh, I even gave a ticket away for that one. <laughs> And they didn't know what to make of the second half, but it is interesting to hear how they made the movie. Um, here's a little bit right here. There's sort of a model of this in, um, in fine art called, uh, an exquisite corpse. And when you sort of start something and then you have someone else come on to finish the rest. So I find that kind of cool that they like all edited together and there was like an assembly, assembling, the assembly cut. Uh, again, the final product didn't end up working for me, but I'm still curious to see them, uh, try this concept with other things and seeing how it works. And in the worst case, I do think that it, it, it succeeded with the Miami love letter that they were trying to go for. Um, but other than that, like I said, we're going to be doing a couple more of these individual ones leading up to the big must watch. Uh, we also have the inter cut one that we did that covers pretty much all the categories at sundance so we have a lot of sundance coverage that's coming out uh especially with a lot of these movies not coming out till a lot later uh and then south by coming up so other than that let me know your thoughts about these movies whether you're excited for them put them on your radar don't forget to comment like and subscribe i won't let you